Hey everybody, Dom here. In the game Left 4 Dead 2, there's a campaign titled The Passing. In this campaign, the story is, the Left 4 Dead 2 survivors are stuck. A bridge is up so they can't continue driving their car. Because of this, they decide to travel on foot to find an alternative way around the bridge. Their goal is to lower the bridge from the other side so they can continue driving. A unique aspect of the Passing campaign is that it starts and ends at the exact same location. Over the course of the campaign, the survivors find their way to the other side of the bridge to lower it to get back to their car so that they can drive over the now lowered bridge. This raises the question, if the journey of the survivors was mapped out, would it make logical spatial sense? Does the bridge at the very start of the first level occupy the same space it does at the very end of the final level? Let's find out! In order to determine if this campaign makes spatial sense, we're going to map it out. The first step is to take an aerial picture of all the levels. The second step is to line the pictures up so that the safe rooms, the locations that are shared between levels, occupy the same space. The final step is to look at the picture of all three levels together and see if the bridges line up. Then we'll know for sure. Here we are on the first level. I'll start by disabling the AI director with this command. This makes it so no new infected will spawn so I can fly around without being attacked. Infected existing before I use the command can still attack so I'll just kill them off quickly. The next step is to remove the AI survivors. This is done by using the kick command on them. All that remains is their health packs. Ominous. Next I'll enable flight with no clip. Next, for nice screenshots, I'll disable the HUD and remove the character's hands and weapons with these two commands. Next, I'll open up the Fog UI with this command. From this small menu, I'll disable the Fog. Fog also deals with a form of game optimization where props and level geometry are forced to stop rendering after a certain distance. I'll set this distance to maximum so that everything can be seen. The glow effect items, switches, and players have will probably not be possible to see from far away, but just to be safe, I'll disable all glow effects with these commands. Left 4 Dead 2 levels are very dark, so to make it easier to see, I'll disable the lighting with this command. With all this setup out of the way, it's time to change the camera into an orthographic camera with this command. This makes the game look two-dimensional. These commands change how much is viewable with this camera. Ideally, the numbers used stay in line with the game's aspect ratio. For me, I'll be using these numbers. The next step is to zoom the camera out and position it so it looks straight down at the perfect angle. This command is used to point the camera to the perfect orientation consistently. I can keep using this command every time I move the camera to regain the perfect angle. Rather than zoom the camera out to see the entire level, I'll be taking screenshots and stitching them together. There are two reasons to do it this way. One, the end result will be a higher resolution image of the level, and two, viewing an entire Left 4 Dead 2 level at once is hardware intensive and can crash the game. Here's the end result for how the first level looks. The path the survivors take through the level looks roughly like this. Now to repeat the process for the second level. The second level looks like this. People consider this to be the longest level in all official Left 4 Dead 2 campaigns, and it really looks like it could be from this overview picture. Here's roughly the path the survivors take through the level. The final level looks like this. On this level, the survivors collect gas cans and bring them back to a generator to lower a bridge. Due to the open-ended nature of this objective, they can take any path they wish. Only the start and the end of the level are linear. The path the survivors take at the start and at the end of the level looks roughly like this. Now that all three levels of the passing campaign have been mapped out, it's time to connect them together and see if the bridge at the start occupies the same space it does at the end. And it looks as though it does not. The mystery is solved. It's a letdown and a bit immersion breaking that the bridges don't line up, but at least now we know definitively that they don't line up. The easiest way to make the bridges line up would probably be to shorten the underground portion of the second level. If it was shorter, the bridges could line up vertically. The easiest way to make them line up horizontally would be to make the underground path in the second level end up a little higher by adding two turns and a hallway. Anyways, that was the video. I've included the large level images alongside this video so that people can inspect them closer if they wish. I've also included the console commands I used as well. Thanks for watching. Au revoir.